So as we start, we're going to be doing a four series um, sermon on communication. But some of you guys know that we have our Love on Purpose Marriage Conference. It is about 13 days from now. We rented out Tampa Convention Center. And so we're going to have a great time for two days talking on marriages. Uh, it's downtown. It's going to be fun. And then so this is communication. Right. And there we're going to talk about structuring your relationship right. Uh, Charmaine and I have been married now in May 25 years of marital Come bliss. On. Come on. Yeah. I know, I know. We look like teenagers. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. It's the glory. It's, it's the, the glory. glory. <laughs> uh, but I've been with this awesome lady for 27 incredible years. And the bedrock of it all has been how we were able to communicate with each other right. and walking it out. Through God's principles. Amen. So I think maybe three or four years ago, I went deep sea fishing. Her family was with me. We were on this big boat, we went deep sea fishing, right? And uh, in the process, <clears throat> in the process, um, my finger got hooked. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie before, <laughs> but so I'm, 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 I'm messing, I got my shrimp, I'm trying to hook my bait. So in the midst of it, somebody was close to me and they were doing their thing. So somehow our lines got tied. They, they got a fish on They got a line. fish. And in the process, I'm just trying to hook my thing, but something happened where they yanked my line and I yanked my finger. So now my finger is hooked, okay? And there's a fish on the line and it's pulling my line too. So I'm trying to hold my finger because I don't want the fish to grab a so, so then I put my elbow in it to kind of brace the cord. So he's trying to, he's worrying about his fish. I'm worrying about my finger. <laughs> I want my finger. He wants his fish. Now we weren't related, so I couldn't tell him, hey, bro, my finger. He's about his fish. So now I'm fighting with this, the rope and my, and I'm trying to unhook myself while I'm trying to brace myself. So, I don't, so I'm like this. Right. So and then we're my, next to each other and he turns around like, babe. And I'm like, ah. You know, I'm like, <laughs> screaming's not going to help me right now, mama. So, and she's not like trying to assist. She's no, just screaming. I not know what to do with that. So my brother-in-law says, bro, let me help you. I said, no, I'm good. He kept saying, I got it, I got it. You know, because it's my finger. You know what I'm saying? I know my pain threshold. I know when to move it, not move it. I don't want someone else where there's no Novocaine, there's no medicine, you about to dig into my finger. No, let me handle this, bro. So... He's saying, no, Jomo, let me help you. I said, no, I got it. So I'm going like this, and, I, and I'm starting to get tired. I don't got it. <laughs> I don't got it. So he says, bro, do you trust me? This is not a good time to ask this question. <laughs> and finally, I said, yeah, I trust you. He grabs my finger. Mm -hmm. He sticks the hook in, twists, then took it out. I was just trying to pull it out. If any fisherman knows, you have to put it in and then pull it out. So he says, Jomo, the reason why I could help you was I saw the hook on the other side. You could only see from your vantage point. You couldn't see from mine. God told me to tell you, some of you struggle in your marriage relationships with communication because you only see through your eyes. Right. And you're going to stay hooked until you can see from the other perspective. See, I know my wife is smart. She's been smart the whole time. Can you repeat that? I know my wife is smart. She's been smart the whole time. <laughs> but I believe I'm smarter. <laughs> and all the men of God said, <laughs> See, I knew it. I knew it. I believe <laughs> right. And I believe I'm right all the time. And all the men said? Yeah. And we know we're right all the time. Can I hear some of the ladies? Yeah. <laughs> I rebuke that rebellious spirit <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so with that being said, when two people right. who are both intelligent mm -hmm. believe they're right, there has to be a standard by which we submit to. Come on. Because the facts are, you can argue your opinion forever. Yes. 
there was a song that I like to play every now and then, okay? And I'm going to see if y'all can guess the song, okay? Y'all can guess the song. You don't hear what I say. Okay, that's enough of that. So simple as one, two, three. Come on Understanding here. Understanding is what we need. Oh, man. See, I knew y'all weren't saved. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Praise God. Hey. What I need from you is understanding. Right. At the core of every healthy marriage, there is an opportunity to have successful communication. Communication can be difficult because based off of your background, your experiences, your culture, we had cultural differences as far as communication goes. Mm -hmm. um, it could affect the way you receive information. So you have to make some adjustments when you're communicating. And also as you evolve and you grow in the Lord, your communication changes as well. So communication is something that we never like, master. We, ma we don't master it, we don't get it right and you move on. It's something you constantly, constantly work at. Here's a good statistic, um, 60 to 90% of all communication consists of body language, eye contact, facial expressions, your tone. Why you gotta look at me like that when you see Because he's always, he's always telling me, you know, you need to check your tone. You need to check your tone, Charmaine. And I'm like, you just don't understand. You don't like the words that's come out of my mouth. It's not how I'm saying it, it's what I'm saying. But um, I don't think he will receive it either way, you know, because if you say it nice, then it's like, oh, you're being sarcastic. And then if you, you know, you check your tone, then it's like, oh, it's your tone. No, so, see, she, she has a lot of energy when she gets excited. I do. And she kind of comes with like, it's like, and I'm like, bring it down. And so, but I, I thought that she was a poor communicator. But then I went to her family's house, and I realized she didn't have an option. You know, I, you know I, 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 after I went to their family's house the first time, and I said, oh. You know, sometimes you have an epiphany like, got it. Matt, you, you're, it was, this, this was the only way you could survive. My, my dad's side is country, and we tend to talk loud. But talking loud doesn't mean we're mad. We're just real expressive with the way we talk. But coming from Jamaica, I would think you would understand that. Whoa, 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 what going on? What going on? Oh sure, my. sure. Wow, you practiced you pass me. You passed me this water. It's not even open. Water. Water. <laughs> you know, you're going to say it, say it right. <laughs> wow. But you know what? The communication, you have to make adjustments because depending on where your spouse is from, they're going to communicate different. And the more you learn them and understand them, you'll understand their triggers and why they may respond in different ways that you may not even expect them to respond at certain things. And you, once you get that understanding, it doesn't become an argument anymore. It comes from a place of, okay, I, I love you and I know where you came I from. Can't believe you did. I, I threw that out there, didn't I? I you wasn't, wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready for that. You wasn't ready. But it was funny, wasn't it? Because I, I always wanted to talk patois, so when I try to do it around his family, they're like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> no, you're not doing it. But I was like, right. how do you know when to emphasize certain parts of the word? They're like, mm-mm, just don't. Just don't. So uh, that, that. It's, it's factual in that my mother spoke to me a certain way, mm -hmm. okay? And so my mindset of a woman speaking to me was a certain way. Right. So my wife, she is all, at her dinner table, they can go at it. And it's cool, it's not bad, but they speak loud, they make jokes, they just be, and she <laughs> can say whatever she wants, there's no filter. And her dad has no filter. So when they get together, it's like no filter. We have fun. They have fun, and they can call each other names and stuff. And, and so <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't grow up like that. So when you say something to me, I got, look, okay, are we about to fight? You know, my mind said, okay, 
I'm not used to this just not ending right here. There's like, yeah, there's right. a fight or something happens next. You know, we don't talk like that and not, okay, what? You know, so that my, so I wasn't ready for, they were just talking to stop. <laughs> Where I grew up, love. after those conversations, hands. It's love, it's love. You're just love. not gonna talk to me like that, so, what? You know, so it was different. And so when you have two worlds colliding, yeah. and our meanings have not met, Meaning, I'll say something, and it means one thing. She says something, and it means something totally different. Yes. And there's no ill intent. It's just how I grew up. Right. And if you don't mirror and take off one accord, it's going to be stressful in your relationship. Right, right. Now, facts. We're going to do some facts. Okay. Communication facts. Number one, God's a communicator. Amen. Okay. So if God's a communicator and we're made in God's image, we are made to be... Communicators. Oh, good, good job, church, good job. <laughs> so when you say, I'm just not a good communicator, mm -hmm. I just don't talk, well, that was not how God created you. Have you been conditioned? Mm. Uh, the Bible says this, Genesis 1-3. God said, let there be light. That's communication. Genesis 1.6, let there be expanse, communication. Genesis 1.14, let there be. All through Genesis 1, God says, let there be, let there be, let there be, and it was. Let there be, and it was. Let there be, and it was. So if I'm made in God's image, in God's likeness, I can speak to my situations. Right. Number, number two, point number two, we are made in God's image, and this is just a scripture for it. Let's read this church, Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness. likeness. So, if I'm made in God's image and he created with his words, I can create with my words. Point three, point three. We have God-like ability. Whose image are we made in? Now watch this. This is going to bless your whole life. Genesis, praise God. It says this, uh, 219. So the Lord God formed, oh, there's your head, praise God, out of every animal of the field, the bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would, what? Let's go back. Come on, read it. Four, Gina, Gen I see you. You flipped at the two from three. God bless you, girl. All right. So the Lord God formed is 219. Let's read. So the Lord God formed out of the ground every animal and brought them to Adam to see what God would call them. So who Adam. named the animals? Adam. So who has the God-like ability? Dominion and authority. So think of it. If God gave dominion to mm -hmm. Adam to call the animals, Man of God, what are you calling your wife? It's good stuff. Woman of God, what are you calling your king? Yeah. You will get what you speak. That's right. That's right. God has created us. When we are not acting right, right, we speak to uh, each other the way we want us to be and not what we see. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm going to say it again. For example, if she says something to me, crass or rude, which, you know. Never happens. <laughs> I'm joking. She is super sarcastic, like super, super. <laughs> it's funny, yesterday we were... Uh, she said some joke to me. It was, it was a jab. It was a jab. So I get on the phone with my sister, and my sister jabs me. I said, what's so going on? It was so funny. It was like right on time. Both of y'all are attacking me. What's wrong with y'all? All I said, she's like, well, Jomo, this is the second time I called you, and you finally answered. You know, I called little Jomo. He picked the phone up. <laughs> he, ain't got no, he ain't got no life like I do. He said. Okay. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> 
she went in on me. But it's not, ba- it's not a bad thing. My point to you is I speak what I want her to be right. and not what she may be right now. True love, here's my definition, true love is the ability to think the best when you see the worst. Because sometimes you see a part of them that you really want to call out. Right. Raise your hand, you know what I'm talking about. Come on. But love, the Bible says, love covers. A multitude of sin. So when I love you, I cover you. Right. I know that she's not perfect. Right. I'm not perfect either. But love covers. So God said, Adam, it's your world. You name the animals. All right. Number four, God gave Adam the power to name Eve. Wow. Genesis 3.20. It says, a man named his wife Eve, life spring, life giver, because she was the mother of all the living. Adam received a death sentence and then spoke life into Eve. Hmm. After he received a death sentence from God, he spoke and called her life giver. We have to be so intentional with our words. Our words have power. When we speak, things manifest. So when you speak life into your wife, that's what she gives back. A lot of times we'll, mm-hmm. you know, we'll hear couples say, you know, well, she's always complaining. Well, she's huh? always, you know, she's always being loud and she's always trying to cause an argument. Well, if you talk to her and find out what is the root cause of it, you can work on a solution, but the communication has to be there. And if you're constantly giving out positivity, it's really hard for somebody to give back negativity all the time. My mentor used to say, well, she still does say, act like he's acting like you want him to act and see how he acts. Say it again, Charlotte. So act like he's acting like you want him to act and see how he acts. Say it so again. if you act like he is the mighty man of God that God created him to be, you act like he's a wonderful husband, he's a great father, then you can't give back to the great father and the wonderful husband something negative. You give back love, you give back support, you give back words of affirmation. So when you give back those things, it's really hard for somebody to give back to you something negative. Even when they're in a bad space, God will deal with them. Right. We can't go off of our emotions. When we act on emotions, we normally act illogical. Mm. And when we're not logical and we're not acting as God have, has created us to be as a wife and setting the atmosphere in our home, then you're going to get the wrong response every time. The key aspect is if when you become emotional, logic leaves. Right. You so really be mindful wanna, to govern yourself. Right. You really want to pause and stop. When you feel yourself getting hot and we're about to have heated fellowship, it's about to be a misunderstanding. (laughs) Just be quiet because you don't have to apologize for what you don't say. So what are the four P's? Whenever you feel like yourself about to bubble over, four P's, pause, slow down, Mm -hmm. ponder, think about it. You need your job. Pause, (laughs) ponder, pray, proceed. Proceed. If you did this, you would keep yourself out of a lot of trouble. Oftentimes, we speak first and think later. James tells us, be slow to speak. That's right. Quick to listen, Mm -hmm. slow to wrath. So you have to change your process if you want to be successful. Good. Let's read Genesis 15. I want to show y'all some, a revelation that you may never have seen before, or you may have. It says this, and this is the precursor to what Charmaine just said. Now, this was the curse that Adam and Eve received from eating the fruit. It says this, I'm going to start in verse 16. To the woman. To who? The woman. He says, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will give birth to children. Yet your desire and longing will be for your husband and he will rule with authority over you and be responsible for you. Now, understand this. 
What God is saying here is not a blessing. Right. This is a curse based on what they did. Mm -hmm. The reason why I want you to understand this is prior to this, in Genesis 1, 26 and through 28, God says, I've made them man, man and woman. They were co-equals. Everyone say co-equals. When Eve was deceived by Lucifer, the consequence was now she had to submit to her husband. Submission was never a part of the plan. It was a consequence of disobedience. And that's why we fight it, women. We fight it with every morsel of our body. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but that's why it's so natural for us to be, you know, everybody says, the, use the term boss chick or boss, you know, oh, she's the boss of the house. It's very natural for us to be that way because that's how we were created originally. Yes. So we have to be intentional about submission. Here's, and this is a thought process that I have not found other people think about. So what I'm about, I'm about to go off the reservation, okay? <laughs> God showed me this. He made man and woman equal, okay? Mm -hmm. When sin came in, Eve had to submit. And that's why he says, and she will, because think about it. If this is a part of curse and he will rule over her, that means this was not a part of the plan. That's they were right. supposed to flow together, mm -hmm. okay? So what God showed me is if man of God does not have a mission, it's hard for a woman to be in submission. That's good. That's I'm good. Say, if man of God, if man of God doesn't have a mission, it's hard for a woman to submit to a person who's going nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's hard to submit to a person who has no vision. Right. Because woman of God's gonna say, here it is, women, where we going, what we doing? 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 Where we going, what we doing, what we doing, where we going, what we doing, where we going, where we going, what we doing. So they're gonna keep asking you questions because they wanna know where we're going and what we're doing. And if man of God does not have an answer, she's going to run over you. <laughs> and the women of God said, Amen. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. They want to know. And God created the man to be the priest, right. the communicator. Right. So if you don't communicate, they right. get frustrated. When they get frustrated, you... When they get frustrated, then you say, you nag. I'm not nagging, I'm waiting for a direction. Right. And if you don't give me direction, I'm gonna make a correction. And if I don't make correction, I'm gonna do an ejection. No, sorry. No. <laughs> You know, it's, it's really hard for a woman to submit to a man if you don't know that your man is submitting to God first. So if your man is not submitting to God first, because a lot of guys could take what you just said and be like, well, you're supposed to submit to me. But if he's not submitting to God and I don't see you submitting to God, then I'm not going to submit to you Facts. because that's the order. Facts. So man of God, get your mission because a woman is not gonna follow a parked car. That's right, that's right, that's if right. If you're going nowhere, why would I follow you? I wanna know where we going, that what we doing. Good. So I need a vision. Right. When I met her, she's, I told her everything that's gonna happen. And she bought the vision. I, I didn't have no money. He was broke, y'all. I, I was driving her car. <laughs> she had a 94 Altima. Man, I have no money. She's like, why are you so broke? I said, but I got a good smile. Let's go. <laughs> I didn't have anything, but I had a vision. You did. I said, no, for real. You did. Because she, she had an allowance and everything. She had money. She's like, you don't get allowance? Yeah. And I said, what's allowance? <laughs> no, no, for real. I said, I remember different cultures. I said, what's allowance? She said, well, your, your parents put money in your account. I said, for what? She says, just being alive. I said, what? I didn't say that. I didn't say just being alive. Like doing chores. I think you said chores. Uh, yeah, so like said, it started out with chores. I but... said, but you're in college. You don't do chores at home anymore. So that's like, you know, a freebie. So yeah. I called my mother up. I said, mom, you whoop me, man. There's a thing called allowance. And I didn't get it. She said, shut up, boy. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> 
<laughs> Go to school! <laughs> Shut up! I said, dang! <laughs> Click! <laughs> Just, you know, because I didn't know about allowance. Some of y'all, some of and y'all. And then my parents gave me extra allowance when they met Jomo. Gave her extra allowance. Because they were like, I think Charmaine has spent off her allowance on Jomo. <laughs> and he eats a lot. <laughs> I, hey, mama, put some more money in there for me, too. <laughs> Amen. And, and they did. They and, did. And it has worked out for them. <laughs> it has worked out. I was See, a good, he flipped that. It worked I, out for them. I was a good stock. <laughs> I was Amazon, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's focus up. And we don't went off. I went off the rails. Okay. Yeah, you digress. I, as I digress, let me get back in the word. Okay, so this. So right here it says, your desire alone will be for your husband, and right. he will rule over you with authority. Another translation says that you will fight for control. Women of God, flow with God's order. Mm-hmm. Don't fight it. Right. I'm going to say it again, flow. Because if you flow against order, now man of God has to do his part too. Okay, now verse 17 says this, and the Lord said to Adam, because you, li- read, 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 because you listen attentively to the voice, the voice of, of your wife. Read that again. Because you listen attentively to the voice of your wife. Stop. God says you put yourself in a bind because you listen to her. Right. Why? You sh- what did I tell you to do, Adam? So here's a challenge, and every man struggles with this, okay? They're naked. This is not hyperbole. The Bible says they're in the, bi- they're in the garden, and they were naked and unashamed. They were what? Naked. Now, imagine Adam sitting there looking at this beautiful woman. She's the first woman, and guess what? She was not birthed. She was made by God. And the Bible says, and God, <laughs> and God made man from the dust. The Bible says God formed her. I knew he was about to do that whole. The, read the Bible. He says, and God formed her. <laughs> he made Adam. He formed her. They were, the Bible says they were naked. So you're saying that she manipulated Adam. I'm just saying, she said, hey, baby, eat this fruit. And he, and he, remember, he's been by himself his whole life. And now all of a sudden, he sees this beautiful creature who has no clothes, none. And she comes and say, hey, baby, eat this. <laughs> he he, he might have thought about God for a second. But God, you over there. She right here. And so he capitulates. Mm-hmm. He listens to his wife. Look what the Bible says. Let's read. Because you listen attentively to the voice of your wife and have eaten the fruit from which the tree which I commanded you, you shall not eat. So here's the rub, brothers. You have to be able to communicate your wife when God told you no. Right. For the benefit of our family. Right. Because of what happens at times, we're trying to please our wives, but we disobey God. And I hear Holy Spirit speaking to me right now because there is somebody in this room thinking, but God speaks to me too. That's a woman, right? <laughs> God speaks to me too. Yes. What are you saying? But God will never tell you to do something directly against what he's told your husband to do. If He will never do that. If your husband is truly hearing from God, which, right. which takes time for you to trust. Right. Because there's manipulation there, meaning my wife, she has great taste, and I want to get it for her, okay? If she wants something, she will get it. It's a matter of time, right? So. Speak that thing, brother. Hey. <laughs> Speak it in the atmosphere. <laughs> Jesus. You can have whatever you like. <laughs> so much, man, so much. So what I do is I say, listen, I, I, I hear you, mm-hmm. I sit this on my board now, and based on how God does it, you'll get it. So that now she trusts that I have done it enough times right. that when I said I'm praying about it, she trusts me. But 
if woman of God has never seen you full come through on it, then there's nothing to trust to believe that you're going to come through. So, but that That's took good. time. That's good. That took time for her right. to get to a place where she said, you know, Jomo, if you say it's going to happen, it's going to happen. So if she says, I want uh, whatever it is that she says she wants. I said, okay, let me take the Lord in prayer. I said, it's my desire to please you because, see, you're not only my wife, you're God's daughter. And God wants the best for his daughter. Mm -hmm. So I say, Lord, you know what your daughter asked for. <laughs> no, I'm taking to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you heard what you said now. Now, how am I going to do this? And, and, and real situations. Mm -hmm. You know, the ring she has, I didn't pay for. It's a three and a half carat solitaire. I did not pay for it. I went to a church and I was not the pastor. And a person put it in my pocket. And I told God, I said, Lord, I don't have the money for the ring that I would like to get her. It was like a carat and a half at the time. I said, but it's the desire of my heart to get her the ring. I told her I was going to upgrade her when I got my second contract in the NFL, and I never got my second contract. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was the plan. I right. said, when I get my next contract, I'm going to break right. you off. Well, it, it never got broke. So anyway. It never got broke. It never, <laughs> <laughs> so I never could fulfill it. So one year I said, Lord. I want to get her a bigger ring. And a person came to a church and put a three and a half, three and a half carat solitaire pinky ring in so my it's pocket. Pinky ring. Yeah. And I took that to the jewelry store and they said, how'd you get this? I said, listen, don't rebuke me. Get, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> and so the ring she wears right now, the diamond, I didn't pay for. Right. Because my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> my father owns all the gold. And if you make up in your mind to please God, the Bible right. says he will give you the desires the of, of your, your heart. heart. So there's some things that you may not be able to afford with money, right. but you have favor. And favor will take you further than money. My God. Now, boy, I'm going too long. Here's my point, y'all. I got to land a plane. And I just want to say I do not have the ring on right now because I knocked the diamond loose in the garage. <laughs> so I'm getting it. I'm getting it fixed. <laughs> so I, I don't want anybody to be like, ooh, let me see what God did because this ain't it. <laughs> if you have expensive jewelry, get insurance. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Okay. Okay. <sighs> so what I want to show you real quick is Eve got cursed with pain in childbirth mm -hmm. and submission to her husband. Adam, he got cursed with work, turmoil, right? But his person was never touched. Why? He's made in God's image. If God cursed Adam, he'd be cursing himself. I hope you get that. I don't know who, if you really know who you are and who God yes. created you to be. God couldn't curse Adam because that was his image. He'd be cursing himself. Come on. I'm going to leave that alone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Verse so good. Point five, and we land a plane. All right. We create the atmosphere of our marriages with our words. Proverbs 18, 21 says this. Let's read y'all's church. Uh, death. And life are in, are in the power, in the power of, the of the tongue, and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of your words. When she's having a bad day, my wife can say negative words about to herself myself, to herself. Yeah. And I had to come. I said, I said, Mama, I said, you are awesome, you are beautiful, you are excellent, and you can do it. And I said, on your worst day, you're the best thing I ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm intentional with my words because the Bible says the harlot in Proverbs, she sits in certain spots. She smells good and look good. Smells she, good and look good. She is intentional. Yeah. So you have to be intentional in your marriage. Not every day you're going to feel like saying I love you. That's right. But you say it. Right. Who here has St. Augustine grass? Raise your hands. St. Augustine. Saint don't, Augustine. Don't water it for two weeks. See how that thing look. Look toe up. <laughs> right? Crispy. And you, and you ask yourself, 
Why do you need so much water? I watered you yesterday. And the thing is, is if you just water St. Augustine, you're going to get that faded green. But if you really want the blades to be nice and thick and dark green, you got to fertilize that thing. And when you fertilize it, bay, bay. Mm. You don't start talking like that, bay, bay. Bay, <laughs> bay. <laughs> Made me want you to get the best of the best. You want to be a fertilizer. We have to be intentional. I'll fertilize everything. <laughs> You need some fertilizer. <laughs> I'm here to fertilize. <laughs> Whatever fertilize means you, to you. you have to <laughs> Whatever fertilize means to you. Some of y'all went there. We got to we got to come up with cold words next week. Cold words cuz next week. <laughs> but you have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. Um, one of my friends mm, that's good. This was a long time ago. Everybody say a long time ago. Long time ago. Um, she was working at a job. She had a friend that would eat lunch with her every day. Nothing romantic at all. But she was always noticing that he would say negative things about himself. And she would always counteract it with something positive. Well, he, had a, he was in a relationship at the time. He wind up ending that relationship because the girlfriend was so negative. And he realized the root of the negative words he was speaking was coming from his relationship with her. So he ended the relationship with the girlfriend and started dating my friend at work because of her words. And a lot of like people would look at her and then look at him and be like, oh, how did you get him? You know, which is so rude. Don't ever ask anybody that. Um, that's, that's, you know, well, anyway. Um, but she would always tell people with my words, with my words. And people didn't get it, but I got it. Because she built him up. She built him up so much that he said, I feel like a king when I'm around you. Come on. I feel so good when I'm around you. I feel like I can accomplish anything. And people don't want to be around people just in general that are negative all the time. Because what you speak, you manifest. Mm. Whether you know it or not, you tell your child, you're going to be in jail. You're going to be in jail. Guess what? They're going to go to jail. You tell your child, you ain't going to be nothing. You're not going to be, you're never going to go to college. With those grades, you'll never go to college. You can go to college with me. Look at Jomo. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> but that was a good one, wasn't it? <laughs> that was joke. I was joking. <laughs> wow. Wow. No. <laughs> ready for that. I'm just making sure y'all still listening to me. <laughs> you, you had a decent GPA when you entered college, right? I had a 2.5 when I entered. I had a 2.5. Well, and they need, well, okay. I'm just saying, it, every, anybody can go to college if you put your mind oh, to it. Oh, my. <laughs> well, there's hope for everybody with a 2.5. To God be the glory. God can still do it. You don't have to have a 3.0. You can have a 2.0. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? You ain't ready for me, chick. I'm a ninja. You ain't gonna throw me on the bed. No. I, I close on anything. <laughs> No, but it was just, it's just amazing because we have the power to really set the atmosphere in our home with our words. And we should use that. We amazing. should use that. Yeah, you weren't ready for that, were you? You just, you had some stuff. You throwing some bombs out here for that, huh? Okay. That's just a little. No, listen, I'm ready. I'm a, listen, I'm a Swiss Army knight. You, <laughs> Swiss Army You throw it. That's it. <laughs> Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father God, I thank you for you're the all-knowing, all-seeing God. Lord, you're the Alpha and the Omega. Lord, I pray right now that we know you and the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, for our sins. Romans 10, 9 says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for your saving grace. Lord, your word says to come to you. So right now, I pray for those who may not know your Lord and Savior, or those who may be in a backslidden condition, or those who lost their way, or those who may be looking for home church. We're not a perfect church, we're not perfect people, but we serve a perfect God who helps in perfect people. And if you want something different, do something different. Change begins with you. 
If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Do something different. Repeat after me. Father God, I thank you for your son Jesus who died for me and rose for me that I may have life and have it more abundantly. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Guide me. Lead me. Fill me. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Glory to God. If you said those words and you believe what you believe, you are on the path, on the journey. We have ministers here at the altar at the end of service who will receive you. But those online, let me know. Go to our website and let me know.